Man, it's hot in here. I gotta turn on the air conditioning. Because I ain't gonna survive this ride. It's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Rumbling Indefinitely. Today I want to talk about problems with MIDI in Ardor. Because that's something important for me. And I think I'm gonna deploy some glasses. What was that? LMS for many years. However, I recently started to feel very limited by LMMS limitations. And since Ardor has developed enough to replace LMMS completely in my workflow, I've decided to make the switch. However, Ardor has its own set of problems currently. And currently means in April 2018, when the most recent Ardor stable version is 5.12 and 6.0 is nowhere to be seen in a stable release yet. So that's the current situation. And currently, there are some problems with MIDI in Ardor, and I've reported them. I reported them as bugs, or I. Or also made forum posts to discuss some things and problems and maybe how propose ideas how they could be um, resolved for the artists. No, I need this. I can't drive without it. And I would just like to talk about this because I think it's important. I think uh, I think people need to be aware of the problems before they jump to art or I need the developers need to be aware that this, these problems exist and that it, they are important to the users or if they are important to the users. They are important to me, but are they important to you? And well, I would like to support the, the developers in trying to fix this to make Ardor work better for us all, especially for those of us who, you're welcome, who Oh dear, sorry. Can't help you too. Especially for those of us who are making electronic music and who need to sequence MIDI data and automation a lot and shift this stuff around heavily. Because this is what electronic music production needs. So, um, in November, 2017 I released my recent long play which was titled Suppressed. It is the last long play that I am planning to release as, a, as my own alone project that is produced entirely with LMMS. I mean it is sequenced and mixed in LMMS. It was mastered and sometimes also mixed with Ardor because I recorded vocals or guitars. I don't remember if I recorded guitars for that album. I might have not. Oh crap, this is a shaky cam. Not good. Better? All right. I hope the video stabilization can... No, it can't. It sucks. All right. We have to deal with it. So that album was the last one I am planning to release. Sorry, but you're so fast that I'm planning to release that was made with a LMMS. And the next long play I want to release, if anything, if everything goes well, it's going to be made with Ardor entirely. And nothing is signaling that it won't be. I know I still have tons of 
left over unfinished unreleased projects that I'm doing a mess but well you just gotta for, forget about this stuff you can't release everything if I were to release everything it's gonna be just a shitload of crap and that's no good to listen to so I'm just picking up the best stuff I think I have and I release that so I've decided to switch to Ardor but there are still problems most notably what I'm recently fighting with is that sometimes the MIDI regions are being lost which is uh, sounds really bad if you think about it so often when I save a project in Ardor and I open it up again some MIDI regions are empty and they play no sounds so if these MIDI regions were copied somewhere else and I can just pick them up from there and replace the empty broken regions with the proper ones that's not a, no big deal it is annoying in these instances but it's not a deal breaker however when the thing hits a, a region that <laughs> When the bug hits a region that is unique and I can't really reproduce it, well, that's a problem because this is basically data loss and that's no good. So I think this is the most important thing to fix because uh, data loss is like a no-go in a creative application. Ardor has a crash recovery in place, which works pretty well most of the times. I think it could be doing the, the saving the, the backup files a little bit more often because sometimes it crashes and it doesn't recover anything uh, and I wish it could but but it's there and it, it saves my ass many times so I'm glad it's there but this disappearing data in media regions is really not good and I hope um, developers can can fix this soon <laughs> so that's that another problems are more with optimizing the workflow that is clunky and not really fast and it could be faster and that is for example copying and moving MIDI regions that use automation for plugins because when uh, when you deal with synthesizers, with heavy synthesizers, uh, sound design, and you you often need to automate lots of stuff either within the synthesizer or with external effects like you know reverb, EQ, phasers, crossover filters, that kind of stuff. Maybe some ring modulation, etc. You know, it's all in a day's work for sound design, like. Static effects are are just retro and boring. So if you want modern sound design, you need to use automation a lot because automation gives life and expression that nothing else gives. LFO and envelopes are not, not enough. <laughs> they are too repetitive and our brains pick up the patterns very quickly and we realize that, oh, it's just an LFO and it's just an envelope, it's boring. But if you can automate some things, you give musical expression, you, you, you put more musical feeling, more of your musical soul into the record, which isn't technically a record, it's, it's synthesized, so it, it's not recorded, but it's still called a record, but go figure. Maybe I can, yeah, I can disable those for, for, for a while, at least, let's see. I, I find it's weird to talk to people who you, who have, you were weird wearing shades because uh, you can't see their eyes and the eyes are important in communicating things so I, I prefer to talk to you without the shades yeah well, this is gonna be a rambly video because this is unfair rambling indefinitely so it's random long unedited well and just uh, random and that's what I want to do it uh, I want to be able to make some videos that are super random not very <sighs> polished and you know, I'm just sweating too much over other videos. I think sometimes I put too much effort into editing and yeah, and it takes too long. But on the other hand, I just, I don't want to put out crap. 
But I want to have an outlet for crab too, and this is it. So yeah, back to moving and copying automation. So there are two types of automation in Ardor. Uh, oh shit. Gotta move that gear up! Get an ambulance! Ugh. Yeah. I think the camera is now badly oriented. Fixing the camera! Oh yeah, better. Not, not perfect. Oh, better now. So, um... There are two types of automation in Ardor. One is MIDI CC automation and another is just generic automation, <laughs> I would say. So the MIDI CC automation is everything that you can save with MIDI data. And that has a limited resolution because MIDI CC typically uses seven bits, which is 128 values between zero and 127. So it's not very much resolution. You can deploy uh, double the resolution and have 14 bits controls, but I don't really know how to force that on anything, and usually it's not possible. Also, most MIDI controllers only support 7 bits for MIDI CC, which is, I think, derived from continuous control. I think that, that's it. So, MIDI CC in Ardor is saved with the MIDI data. Basically, when you record something in a MIDI or draw some notes, Ardor saves that as a MID file to the disk. And the CC automation also goes there. And your pitch band automation, it's also MIDI CC. However, that's by default using two set 14 bits, so it's high resolution, which is good. And that is saved with the MIDI data with the region. So when you move your MIDI region on your track, on the timeline, that automation moves with the notes, which is cool. Because, um, yeah, we want that. However, all the other automation, for example, if you want to change the, if you want to automate a notch filter effect applied after your synthesizer, is doing its job. Um, you usually use the generic LMM of Ardor automation, uh, which is great. It has great um, resolution and stuff, but it's not being synced with the MIDI regions. So if you move your MIDI region, the automation is not going to move with that. You have to move it separately. And the problem is that you can't really move that stuff and if you have multiple lanes of automation uh, you have to move that separately uh, so basically moving it is not an option for complex parts instead what I'm doing and I've, I've discovered you can do is cut and paste the automation along with the media regions and to do that you need to use the range select tool you select the range so for example your four bars the phrase that you want to copy or move somewhere and you, you select that range, the time range, then you add your automation lanes to the selection because they are not selected by default. And I don't know of any settings in order that can make it be selected because that would make it easier. Like if you could just swipe, uh, you know, just drag and select that, that time range yeah, range selection, sorry, not region, range. A time range and just drag that over and have all automation go with it. That would be that would be cool, but it's not working like that. You have to select the range, then control click on the automation lane headers until you have all that selected. Careful to not click anything silly and deselect your your ranges or, or tracks. 
and then you press even Ctrl C, either Ctrl C if you want to copy or Ctrl X if you want to cut and paste it somewhere else. Then you make sure your edit point is set to playhead or mouse, depending on what you want to use to mark your paste point, your edit point. So then you move your mouse or your playhead wherever you want to put the starting um, point of the of the selection to, to be pasted in, and then you control V. You press control V. And you have either a copy or or the only copy <laughs> pasted or or duplicated. And it's it's clunky. I hear you. It's clunky. <laughs> so yeah. I really hope the Ardor developers can can improve on that and and figure out a better way to do this or just make the current way easier, more fluent. I don't like that this thing is keeps bumping. Again? I have nothing I have nowhere to move. What you doing? <laughs> Alright. There are many emergencies in this city right now. I already had two. In no other video I had a single one. That's telling. Or maybe it's a one big emergency, I don't know. They are all headed the same way, right? No! Oh yeah, they were. Yeah, they are. Anyway, so that's that's problematic. In my Unfavlog videos I usually tell about how to work with this so you can find your way around it. I know it's not optimal. And actually I was recently thinking, should I really do Ardor Guide series right now with these um, these issues in place like doesn't this defeat ardor as a as a tool for serious production and i thought to myself no it doesn't you know yeah it, it should be fixed but there's tons of other great things you can do with ardor and well i'm gonna try to make that series anyway and i i'm gonna i can always make a series two for future versions of ardor where hopefully that things are are better mm, yeah so other problems with MIDI are loop problems for example uh, why is it just uh, stop shaking what the f yeah, I just need to change the resonant frequency because I think the windshield has a resonant frequency very low and it it's resonating with the engine when I'm not driving and probably resonating with some harmonics too when I'm driving and that shakes the camera very bad. I don't like it. Oh man, it's hot. What was I talking about? Hardware issues. Yeah, MIDI issues. Oh, another MIDI issues. R looped playback. So, for example, in LMMS, I would often loop a certain part of the song and work on it, edit regions or edit drum patterns as it's played back over and over. And it works fine. It, it just works. I also did the same thing in Ardor for audio and it works very well. However, with me, it breaks and <laughs> I don't know, I recently, I don't remember if it was Ardor 6 or Ardor 5, and that's important because uh, he, I should not report Ardor 6 issues in the deb, in the bug tracker. Um, I think I did that before, and I apologize. I, I missed that information, and I, uh, I reported some issues regarding Ardor 6, and I should not have. I don't remember if it's currently also in order 5, I'm gonna check it, but I had this issue that when you select a, for example, you select a bar or a range or a, a MIDI region that lasts, I don't know, a bar, and you press the right square bracket, you get loop markers to be placed around your selection. So then if you press the L key, 
Ardor will go into loop playback mode and it's gonna start transport so you can just listen to your selection over and over. And with MIDI that breaks because when you have a bar, it has four beats, right? It has the first downbeat, then it has the upbeat, and then it should be the downbeat again, which is the same downbeat because it should have looped, but it actually plays two downbeats because it plays the downbeat of your looped bar and it also plays the downbeat of the next bar after the, the one that you're trying to play in loop. And it plays that in a very short delay. So if you enable metronome, you actually hear something like, you first you, you loop the region, uh, you, you, yeah, you, you, you define the loop range, you play, you loop the playback and you go You have two beats and that breaks because then Ardor, I think then Ardor plays back if you for example have that r MIDI region duplicated afterwards it often plays back the same note very quickly and it doesn't send a note off because it just it shouldn't send the note on even so it doesn't send a note off and that note gets stuck and it plays through all eternity until you send panic to you just control press control alt p and it sends note off to all instruments on all channels so it's a it's a quick way to do that there's also a button in the interface for that but it's no good like you play one loop it's good and then it breaks so it's like okay and even if it doesn't break for example if you have a drum beat that doesn't break for some reason you can get around displacing your loop markers to not be perfect but for example stop a little bit early to make the re re loop re range a little bit shorter uh, but it then messes up your rhythm and you're, you can't really you can't really listen to your rhythm anymore because you have a shorter bar and sometimes I don't know sometimes the first note doesn't play in the loop or at all so then I shift my start loop mar loop start marker early and again it breaks the timing like it's it's not a one bar anymore it's it's 1.1 bars or or 0 0.95 bars and it's hard to program drums that way what you can do is enable auto return which is a function in ardor that brings the playhead back into the start position after you stop the playback so you can put your uh, playhead in the beginning of a bar you want to you want to addition you enable auto return and then you press space and you start playback and then if you press space again it will stop playback but auto return will put the playhead back to the place where you started the playback so you can just tap spacebar twice and it's gonna play the same thing again uh, I know it's not as convenient as a loop however it also gives you more control because you can uh, easily stop it and replay it and you can easily also listen to the more to more of your composition that comes after the bar you would originally be looped over so that's something you can use to get around the problems of looping and MIDI yeah are there any other problems with MIDI um, ma viewing and manipulating note velocity is a bit difficult because most programs uh, most DWs I've worked with they have kind of a lollipop graph for note velocity under the, pl the, uh, the piano roll pane or window and that's true for uh, like open source and commercial programs that I've used like Pro Tools, Cubase, Reaper uh, yeah like I think every single one does that and in order there's no such thing right now you don't have the lollipop graph 
to manipulate node velocity. Oh shit, it's jam, it's traffic jam again here. Can I please come here, please? Oh, thanks. Shucks. Okay. Yeah, and currently the way that you view node velocity in Ardor Piano Roll is with the color of the nodes. So by default you input nodes with velocity of 64, which is right in the middle because the MIDI velocity ranges from 0 to 127, 7 bits, as we already discussed with MIDI CC. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing because, well, yeah, go ahead. And uh, the, the velocity of 64 is green, and as you increase the velocity, the notes become orange and then red. If you, sorry, if you increase the velocity, so you make the notes louder. If you decrease the velocity, they also change the color. Oh, I don't remember what color. I mean, it, it would make sense for them to go blue, maybe. Maybe not. Come on! So that's that. <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty convenient, but to manipulate the node velocity, you have to select the nodes, and you can do two things currently I'm aware of. Like the first thing I, I used to do is use my mouse wheel, and if you hover over a node, uh, you should have a, a, a tooltip popping up with the node current node velocity in it and if you use your mouse wheel your scroll wheel to you can use it to change the velocity up and down and the tooltip should update it doesn't I think it doesn't always update or sometimes it just disappears for a while and you don't know what is the velocity and you need to move your mouse away and then move it back so yeah it's uh, it's flaky a bit but you can also use the V key, V for velocity. And if you press it with notes selected, you can type in a number and you can apply the velocity or I think you can even do some other things like increase the velocity by X. Um, yeah. And if you access that panel without having any nodes selected, I think you will get a default velocity for newly created nodes. So, yeah, so we can change what velocity will be assigned to newly created nodes with the draw tool or the, the edit mode when you hit control and mouse, I think. So that's that. And I thought, and I recently, I think I I don't know if I wrote on the forums or if I filed uh, an issue on in the bug tracker on Mantis. But I thought about it and like if just like there is um, an automation lane for the bender, which is the pitch bend, or any other CC MIDI control, why not have an, a lane? for the note velocity and there you would basically have an a the, the the familiar lollipop graph and you could open up this lane i know not not everyone needs that lane and not everyone needs that lane all the time for every track so it's not a big deal it, it can be it could be even opened on, on uh, up by default or or not but it would be great to have that lane with the lollipop graph where you could just draw a line to make a crescendo or just change the velocity and or just view it easily and change it without using the mouse wheel because uh, or type in a number on a keyboard because that's really inefficient and hard to get used to and, and be quick with I think. That's a nice exchange of lanes. Uh, so yeah, um, maybe I'll try to link to my bug reports and maybe forum posts in order. So if you are interested in these things, you can 
go there, read it, or maybe post and reply, or maybe propose some other solutions, or say I'm stupid, or anything, really. Uh, yeah, I hope we can we can help the other developers to to solve these issues and make media workflow in order really rock solid. I'm looking forward to see what's gonna happen in Ardor 6, but it's a long time away, so I'm not like I was thinking about maybe waiting to to start making releasing the, the videos for Ardor Guide series until Ardor 6 is released, but it's gonna take a long time, so I decided to start doing that earlier. However, I have way too much on my plate, like I really wish I could have at least one day a week to do this stuff because there's so much I would want to do and also I'm often I spend a lot of time instead of for example editing a video I, I sit down to edit the video and then I find a bug and I just sit down and write a bug report and I don't know or search for for fix or try to install newest version for example I recently tried to install the newest version of Kaden Live and it doesn't work and I, I wrote a forum post about it I'm just checking it every day for two days trying to see if anyone knows what's going on so I can get running because I have like I have some crashes in Kaden Live and I would like to be able to take advantage of autosave and the crash recovery that is in place in the newest version but it's not in the current one but the newest version doesn't work and I have to be, use the current one and yeah and that's like uh, so lots of my time is are is also spent trying to help solve problems with the software and I, it's not like I'm complaining about it because it's it's a natural thing and I want to help develop the software and I want to help fix the problems uh, I just want to make you aware of that By the way, I'm making a video for my uh, suppressed album. I wanted to release that album on YouTube in the 2017 still. I thought I'm gonna manage to release that in this, uh, December. I didn't. I, then I thought I'm gonna release that in maybe January, maybe February. I didn't. But I, I was working on that, but I had problems I couldn't resolve back then. And I finally managed to, to f get my way around it, and I'm currently rendering that, and it's like... I have 105,000 frames, because it's a... it's a... it's an hour and 20 minutes? I don't, an hour 15 minute video at 30 frames per second full HD um, yeah and I'm rendering like 10,000 frames every day and my, my PC is basically rendering these frames from Blender Compositor for it was Friday I started Friday, Saturday, Sunday Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Today is Thursday. I am rendering this for the seventh, sixth day, non-stop. I'm like, I'm like sixty thousand frames down right now. So it's like forty-five thousand frames to go. And yeah, I guess it it should be ready next Monday or Tuesday. So I'm excited to see what you what you think about it. I think the video is pretty beautiful. It's simple, it's very simple. I went to just make an animated visualizer and I made one with Ardor, sorry, animation nodes in Blender. So it's nothing like, it's not as anything, I'm not using stock anything, I hate stock. Stock is just, ah. Oh, stock is not art. Stock is anti-art. <laughs> I mean, if you buy art from stock, it's it's not your. I I have very strong feelings about using stock anything. I like 
I don't say it, it, it should not exist. I, I perfectly understand why it exists. And I even sell some stock stuff, like I sell some stock sound effects. Actually, one sound effect. And yeah, but I would, I, I'm not using stock anything. So, um, also I, I don't even know if you can buy stock animation notes projects. <laughs> Maybe you could, because it's very powerful. If you don't know, animation notes is a, is a procedural animation system for Blender that lets you program complex behaviors and data processing of geometry and other things, also text processing, and it's just ugh, amazing. And it's open source and it's completely free and it's, a, it's, a, it's an add-on for Blender, the open source 3D all-around solution which I'm using at work every single day along with Inkscape which is an open source like a graphic a vector graphic editing program which is fantastic yeah so it's me rambling right here randomly rambling I thought about calling this series random rambling or something and, and making a the short name RR but then I thought about URI which is you know stands for Univel Universal Remote Identifier? Isn't it? URI. And I changed the meaning of it to Unfor Rambling indefinitely. Just like with UV, it's Unfor Vlog, but it's also Ultraviolet. Or well, Ultraviolence if you're weird. No, it's not. Yeah. Same with QR. I made one video in a series called QR, which was quick requests. And I just made a very quick video about synthesizing noises of vinyl record being scratched, basically. Yeah, and yeah, that, that was also a redefinition of, of, a, of an existing acronym something I enjoy. I'm not sure if I should do that because it might confuse new people very much. Like, why is this guy calling this QR or why is this guy calling this URI? I mean, it's always written in the corner, but maybe it's not as searchable as it should be. I don't know. I'm not sure if I should do that for our guide. I thought about breaking some conventions that I've come up with just for the sake of making it more findable in the YouTubes. For example, I, I thought about putting the name of the series at the end of the... Oh crap, oh, I missed my spot. At the end of the video title instead of the, in the beginning. Like, the Anfa Vlog videos are titled UV hash number and then the title and I thought about calling the ardor guide videos something something uh, dash ardor guide numbers or something something but I don't know let me know if you think that it makes sense why is this car here what the fish okay I'm gonna park here then Let's see what will happen Am I gonna make anyone angry? Oh crap. Let's not bash into the door. That would suck. Big time. Okay, I promise I'm gonna upload this video as soon as I just Yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm just maybe I should call this I don't know. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna slap it into Kaden Live, add the corner tag. Add the intro animation. Oh, I need to render the intro animation. Shoot. Okay, I'm gonna do that. My CPU is 100% occupied, but my GPU is not. So it can do it. Have I parked right? No, I think I, I, I'm thinking I'm too close. That one can can leave right now. Let's, let's fix that. Oh, that one. Well, someone's gotta be blocked. That's life.
can't make everyone happy. Just impossible. Impossible. All right, I'm home. Can do some things. <sighs> Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something or found this interesting or inspiring or whatever. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions about this or other things related with you Linux audio, please leave them in the comment section. Uh, if you think long hair is cool, let me know. If you think beards are lame, let me know. Uh, and now just go and make some music. Bye. Parking block place. In my parking spot. Oh shit. Let's do this quick, motherfuckers! Oh shit. Woohoo! Backwards! And backwards again. Good. Record time, mate!